All right, guys, we're going to get started with a quick modeling tutorial. And we're going to start with going to a new project here. And once you have your new project open, um, what we're going to do is first set our project. So we're going to go to File. And we're going to go to Project Window. And this should open up here. Now, mine's already labeled Screwdriver, but what I want you to do is create a new. Um, you should get used to doing this for any project that we create. Um, this is great because it will show you the actual workflow for how um, these 3D projects are going to be um, organized. So current project, I'm going to do screw driver sample. You could just do screwdriver and you're going to choose where you want it to go. So here it shows my S drive and in a Maya folder, um, I can relocate a new if I hit that folder relocate a new place for it to go. So now I have Maya um, screwdriver. I'm going to go up and now I'm in the Maya folder. I already have a screwdriver folder, but I'm going to create one for screwdriver sample and I'm going to select this folder here. And so now I'm going to go to accept and should be done. Now, one of the first things we want to do is bring in a reference image to our image plane. We don't want to set it here in the perspective uh, viewport. So I'm going to hit the space bar and I'm going to go to the side view here and hit space bar again. Now I just have a flat side view. You cannot turn this uh, left, right. I mean, you can up here, but then you're no longer going to be in the correct view. So what I'm going to do is create a viewport that's going to have a reference image that I can use for modeling. So I'm going to go to view, image plane, import image, And I'm going to find so it takes me automatically to source images. So I have nothing there. So there is a reference image that you have wherever it might be saved. Most likely it's put into your uh, downloads folder. And so what I'm going to do is quick and easy way is I'm going to open up my Windows Explorer or yeah, file explorer and go to downloads. And this is why you want to keep all of your stuff in the right place. Look at all this mess. Um, I have a, an image here, screwdriver, that I happen to know already where it's at. But your downloads folder is going to look like an absolute chaos. Um, so you want to make sure it's put in the right place. So I'm going to cut this image here. And I'm going to, let's see, so control X to cut. And I'm going to move to my, where that folder is. I'm going to go to this PC. I'm going to go to your student drive, I'm going to go to my drive, and I have a folder for Maya. Remember the location of where that is, lo where that folder is. Screwdriver sample, and I'm going to place it here in the source images. And I'm going to do control V to paste, and there it is. Um, and it should, if I hit this little button down in the bottom right, it should be able to see a little preview of it. So now it's there, and now it shows here. So I'm going to click that, and I'm going to open it. And there's my reference image. So this is great. But if I start modeling, I'm only going to be able to see half of the model from this view. So what I'm going to do is hit spacebar, go to my perspective view. And what I want to do is with this still selected, still highlighted with the green, I'm going to move, use my translate tool and move it back. Somewhere right about there. That's fine. Um, just so it's out of the way, it's still going to be my reference image and it's still going to work perfectly. Um, now what I want to make sure is that I can actually use this image um, with a, as a reference without having to move it around. Um, but I'm going to make some changes to it first. With it still selected, I'm going to go to Attribute Editor over here. And I'm, by the way, I'm in General. Um, if you're not in General, your menus might not pop up here. So I often use this as my go-to layout. Um, this is pretty bright, and that might get in the way of me actually seeing my controls when I actually start to model. And so on the color gain, what I'm going to do is lower that down so it kind of more matches kind of more of the background. And it's not quite the background. That's pretty close right there. But we'll leave it a little bit lighter, something like that. And then what I want to do is go to channel box and with it still selected again, 
I'm going to select this right here. It's going to create a new layer from selection. And I'm going to hit this button once, twice, so that the R shows up for restricted, which means um, now, once I click away, I can no longer select that thing and move it. Um, this V is for visibility, so you can make it disappear or reappear. All right, so that's the basics for that. Now I've got this set up, I'm ready to go. I want to go to, let's see here, um, I want to create a cylinder. There's my cylinder. Now when I rotate it, I can rotate it 90 over here. Um, I can hit E on keyboard and I can start to rotate it on like an X axis. So I can go 90 and enter and it turns it 90 for me. Um, I'm going to control Z to get to back that up. Another option you can do if you don't want to use channel box, you can use um, still rotate tool. So I'm still in E and then I'm going to hold J on my keyboard and I'm going to rotate on that red. That red is the X axis and I'm going to rotate it. So, it, and when you notice when you're holding it on J, it clicks basically to absolute angles. And so you'll see on the channel box, how much it's changing by 15 degrees each time. So that's kind of a quick and easy way to get some absolute angles. Um, and also to make sure like if you have multiple things you're trying to rotate that they all kind of rotate the same. Um, so got this set up here and the reason I moved that image plane back, you'll see now is because that image plane was set at zero and it would have split my um, cylinder in half. So I'm going to go back to side view. Most of what I'm going to do right now is going to be in the side view. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to move this W over here. I'm going to scale it R and I'm going to stretch it out this way. Now it's getting hard to see. So what I want to do is hit four. So it is in wireframe. And I'm going to start to try to match the scale of this down. Um, I'm going to try to keep it using this middle one here, the middle control or the end control. If I squash it down from this, it's going to flatten it like a pancake. It's no longer going to be a cylinder anymore. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go back and forth and try to center this. This has actually worked out pretty good. Um, zoom in a little bit. It might not line up exactly with the top and bottom so i can scrunch that down a little bit that works out really good the ends aren't exact matches but if i wanted to i can um, bring that in also the end of this isn't exactly curved on the end of a screwdriver it's actually pretty flat so what i want to do is bring that in just a little bit and then i'm going to move it over to the end because I want the end of the screwdriver. I know that this is just showing up from the, the way the picture is taken. So now I've got my cylinder created here. And if I go to the attribute editor and I go to poly cylinder one, I'll see that the subdivision is set by 20. Okay, that's fine. That's the ridges around the screwdriver. The actual screwdriver in this picture doesn't have 20. Um, instead, what I'm gonna do, you can keep it at 20. It's gonna work either way, but this is gonna be a little bit more accurate. I'm gonna go to 12 on this and hit enter and for the subdivision height so that changed the number that goes around this way um, i'm going to change perspective so i get a, a view from another angle here and so the subdivision height adds on subdivisions this way i can add on a few this way i'm going to end up moving them anyways um, so i'm going to undo that and subdivision caps this could help things out as well, but I've got to work around. Um, we don't need necessarily to have caps on the end here. Um, so I'm going to do without that. I'm just going to keep it as a basic cylinder, but with 12 on um, the long side. So now that I've got this set up, I am ready to start modeling. Um, and because I'm dealing with basically a bunch of ridges and shape changes along the profile of this, what I'm going to want to do is add more um, subdivisions, but I'm going to do them manually. So I'm going to go to Mesh Tools, and what I want to do is go to Insert Edge Loop. So this tool right here, when I click that, you'll see this tool highlights, and it automatically puts me in edge mode. And so whenever I click on this and drag, you'll see that 
I'm going to start adding in where I see kind of the shape of the, the profile of the screwdriver changing. I'm going to add um, lines. I'm going to add some mesh there. Add, and so as long as I'm in this tool, I'm going to keep adding on some more. And so there, and then it goes down, kind of dips down here. And I'm being very particular. The more accurate you can be, the more exact this model is. So as it goes up, down, up, down, I'm going to put a line on each one of those. And I try to get them as close in place as I can right now. That way I don't have to worry about it later. So all the crests and all the valleys of each of those little dips. And again, this is going to be the end. Mine's going to look flat from a profile view and not with this perspective kind of curve. All right, so that is this end. So I'm going to pan over this way. And I'm going to add some over here. So it starts to dip down this way. And if you want a gradual curve, you probably want to add multiple lines to make that more gradual. And so I'm going to add one here. And because it's going to scale this down so that it starts to taper off. And then I'm going to add some more, a few as this starts to curve down. And then it curves up again. So I'm going to put one here and then it curves down. So it's kind of a weird little knob on the end of the screwdriver. So I'm going to add a few back here to help that kind of taper off to a sharper, more gradual curve. So it looks just like a screwdriver, right? No, it doesn't. What we want to do is start to scale these edges. And so I switched my scale tool here. And whenever I double click on one of these, you'll see that it highlights the whole edge loop. And so what I want to start to do, I'm going to start with this one's already pretty much set. I'm going to start to taper from here and start working my way down this way. So I'm going to double click here. And when you're scaling these down, scale them from the center. Don't scale them from the top, scale them from the center because you're making a round object. And so as I do this, I'm going to scale this so that that profile on the edges matches with the profile of the image and I'm going to start making my way down. I'm going to start scaling these as needed. And start scaling that all the way down to there. So I see it kind of tapers off there. This one starts just following that profile. So it's basically just tracing with lines. You're just using kind of a weird tool to do it. So keep doing that. And I know it looks weird right now, but as long as you keep going, it will start to make sense. Okay, it kind of comes to a point right there, but we can we can adjust that. In fact, I feel like it probably could use another line there. So I can go back and say, let's put one here and let's scale it. Oops, that's not my scale tool. Let's scale it so it's a little bit more gradual. And we can fix that and adjust that little um, point right there later. So that end, I say is pretty, pretty well done. I'm going to start going to this end now, start scaling this down. Okay, pretty simple, easy modeling tool, just dealing with edge loops and scaling. This part is a little tedious, but in the end, the details are going to make up for it. It's going to look good. So keep doing this, working my way down, just double clicking and reshaping these. Now the image, if it's a tiny bit, oh, oh no, don't want to do that. Control Z if you make a mistake. The image and your model, pretty much screwdriver is going to be pretty well um, symmetrical. So what's going to be on the bottom, it's going to be on the top, even though the image itself might be a little skewed. Um, it's not the most perfect picture, but it works. I'm going to scale this down. And click there, 
make that flat on the end like that. All right, so pretty good looking shape. If I go back to object mode, right click and hold and go to object mode. Now I can see this, if I hit five on the keyboard, you can see the actual shape. If I go to perspective mode, hit space bar, space bar, you'll see, hey, that looks pretty good. It's a good start. Um, now, if I go select that, when I say, hey, what would that look like if it were smooth? And I hit uh, three, for example, you're like, oh, I don't know about that. That doesn't look so good. We'll make some adjustments. I'm gonna go back and press one on the keyboard. So it goes back to the edge mode again and go back to my side view. All right, I'm gonna go, let's see. What we want to do is create around the edge of a screwdriver, around the handle of a screwdriver. It's not typically like this. A lot of times like the one that we're looking at has these little ridges that go in and out, um, but it goes around this way rather than the profile like what we did right here. So we're gonna create something similar. Um, you might have a different number of um, subdivisions around uh, the long side of the handle, and that's okay. What I'm gonna do is in per perspective mode, I'm going to go into um, face mode here, and I'm gonna select every other, I'll make sure I'm in select mode so I don't accidentally select something wrong and move something. I'm holding shift and selecting every other face. So like that. If you have more faces, that's fine. Um, this is what you need to do. Now what I wanna do is um, scale these. All right, but I want to I want to extrude the faces, but I want to extrude them inwards, which sounds funny. Um, and so you, there are ways that you can extrude. If I were to um, take a tool like this and hold Shift, it says it's going to extrude, but this is not how I want them to extrude because look how they work. They all work in unison, but in the wrong direction. So I'm going to undo that. Control Z. And what I want to do is extrude faces. I'm going to hold shift, right click, hold, and go to extrude face. Okay. And then this weird gizmo shows up here. And that's funny because that's actually what it's called is a gizmo. And what I want to do is um, I want to basically push them inwards. So I grabbed the blue handle here. I'll undo that. Um, it was blue before I selected it. Um, so if I select over here, let me redo that again. All right, so that blue handle, I want this to go inwards. Um, it's all based off of this face right here. So all the other faces are gonna copy this face. And so I'm gonna grab that blue handle and push it inwards. So it creates kind of a little divot around the handle, right? If you've held a screwdriver before, Maybe you've held one something like this that has kind of these ridges around it. It's pretty accurate. Okay, so once I'm there and I kind of push that in, extruded it, those faces inward, what I wanna do now is just go to regular scale tool. And with them all selected, what I wanna do is grab this guy and scale them, oh, not the yellow one, undo that, control Z, along the green one here, and so it creates kind of a nice tapered edge, right? That's pretty good looking. Yes, and it does start to look a lot like a um, lightsaber. Um, and that's something, you know, that you can kind of do as well. Um, play around with uh, designing your own lightsaber if you want to. Um, I, I know I've done it. So there we have our kind of um, handle is starting to take shape there. Um, so I'm going to go back out of this and I'm going to go to right click hold and go to object mode. Um, so now click away, got those little ridges there. It's going to be pretty accurate to this kind of screwdriver right here. Um, but now if I go to three, 
now it looks even goofier. Okay, we'll get to that on the next step. Um, I'm gonna go back to one, and I'll show some ways that you can fix that uh, to keep it from when you go to go to smooth this out and get rid of these edges that your whole screwdriver just doesn't totally deform. So that's it for part one. Um, make sure that you can at least get to this step right here, and then we'll move on to the next.